Okay, so we are going to discuss about electric motor and back EMF in this session. So motor basically we have studied it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy, right? It's a device which converts electrical energy into okay. it converts electrical energy into mechanical energy and the current carrying conductor when placed in a magnetic field experiences a torque because of which the coil rotates. So basically you have you remember torque is equal to m cross b. So whenever there is a coil in magnetic field north pole and let's say south pole and if current is passed so it becomes a current carrying coil in magnetic field which will experience a torque because of that torque the motor will start the coil will start rotating. So this is basically electric motor which converts electric energy into mechanical energy. The concept is torque is equal to magnetic moment cross P. Okay. So this is electric motor, the basic functionality of it. The current carrying coil in magnetic field experiences a torque because of that it starts rotating. Now the construction of first of all AC motors are two types alternating current motor and DC motor. There are certain parts involved like armature, right? The magnet is there, then the commutator, then the brushes. So you look in the diagram on the right side. So this is an diagram of an motor. So there are commutators, carbon brushes, magnet, and there is a coil. So basic funda is when current is passing, the coil will rotate. Now the if the direction of current is changed, then the problem is let's say that direction of current changes. So once the coil rotates clockwise, and then it will rotate anti-clockwise again clockwise and again anti-clockwise. But we want it to rotate in one direction only. And to, for that, basically we use commutator. Okay, so this is one theoretical question that they generally ask. So the purpose of commutator is to ensure that current flowing through the rotor winding is always in same direction. Okay, so this is the core function of commutator. It's a, just a theoretical point because we want the motor to rotate in one direction only. And what are the functions of carbon brushes? Also, they might ask the carbon brushes. So basically brushes rides on the commutator and make good electrical connections. So carbon brushes, brushes are fixed. So it just provides the connection when the commutator is rotating, the brushes provides the connection. So it's kind of soft spring like structure. So commutator rotates with the coil. Commutator rotates with the coil and carbon brushes are fixed. So this is a theoretical point. Remember this for the motor. So first concept is current carrying coil in magnetic field experiences a torque because of that the coil rotates. Now sometimes if we want that coil should rotate only in one direction. So we have to reverse the direction of current. For that we use a device called commutator. And then there are carbon brushes which are fixed which maintains electrical connection. That's it. Do not get into detail of the construction and all. Okay. Then there are windings, armature, magnet and all. Let's continue. Now the core concept here is back EMF. Okay. What is back EMF? You might see questions on back EMF and all. So this back EMF is actually the induced induced potential difference or EMF. Why it is called back EMF? See, first of all, just listen, listen to me. Now this is a current carrying coil in magnetic field. It is experiences a torque. But if you see, this is a conductor which is rotating in magnetic field. So if a conductor rot rotates in magnetic field or cuts magnetic field lines, then EMF is induced. This is also a concept. So if there is a current in the coil, it will rotate. But then again, if a conductor is rotating, that means flux is changing. So there will be an EMF induced, which will oppose the cause. So that's why it is called back EMF. Back means it is opposing the actual EMF, actual source. Okay. So coil is rotating. This is also a conductor, which is rotating in magnetic field. So flux is changing because of that EMF is induced and this EMF opposes the cause which produces it. That's why it is called back EMF and we have studied this in electromagnetic induction. It was something like this N B A omega cos omega T, right? The EMF induced. How did we get it? We wrote flux is equal to B into magnetic field into area into cos theta. Theta was omega T and then EMF magnitude is D phi by DT. So using this and number of turns of the coils. So using this, we got N B A omega cos omega T. So this is called back EMF. Okay. Nothing else. When current from an external circuit source is passed through the armature of the electric motor, the armature coil rotates in the magnetic field through. 
इट कट्स दी मैग्नेटिक फील्ड लाइन ऑफ फोर्स एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ई एम एफ इंड्यूस दिस इज ऑल्सो ट्रू तो अकॉर्डिंग टू लेंस लॉ दिस इंड्यूस डी एम एफ अपोजिट दी रोटेशन ऑफ द आर्मेचर द इंड्यूस डी एम एफ वर्क अपोजिट टू द ई एम एफ अप्लाइड टू दी एक्सटर्नल इलेक्ट्रिक सोर्स एंड अपोजिट दी मोशन तो दिस इज कॉल्ड बैक ई एम एफ so this is called back emf now greater the speed of the armature greater the back emf this is again a very important point greater the speed of armature greater the back emf this is very important questions can be based on this you can see here also emf is nba omega cos omega t so always remember this point the back emf is directly proportional to omega greater the speed of rotation greater the back emf okay now back emf is clear whenever a coil is rotating in magnetic field flux changes because of that emf is induced that's why it's called back emf so there is back emf in electric motor so this is the concept part now how the numerical comes what are the formulas that you have to remember that we will see now first of all at the time of start for theoretical questions at the time of the start when you just started the motor Back EMF is almost zero. Why it is almost zero? Because omega is zero. So at the time of the start, you know E is proportional to omega. So at T is equal to zero, omega is equal to zero. So back EMF is almost zero. So if back EMF is zero, there is no opposition to the EMF. That means current is maximum. So always remember at start current will be maximum because back emf is not op opposing the external emf so back emf is at the time of start the back emf is almost zero because omega is zero and the current flowing in the motor is maximum why is the current maximum because if there is no opposing emf then current will be maximum as the speed of the armature as the speed of the armature increases back emf also increases and if back emf increases thus current decreases because it is opposing more and more so this is one important theoretical point remember this we will do questions also so as the speed of the armature coil increases back emf increases because of which the current decreases okay when the coil attains the maximum speed back emf is maximum current is minimum when the coil attains maximum speed the induced emf becomes constant and the current is reduced to minimum okay so what we have studied at the time of start omega is zero so induced back emf is zero since back emf is zero the opposing emf is zero that means the current is maximum now as the omega increases finally the back emf becomes maximum and constant and the current becomes minimum as simple as that and this we have already seen that back emf this we have seen that back emf is directly proportional to the directly proportional to the angular velocity of rotation so remember this formula students okay so i guess so far so good everything is clear so when the omega is zero at the start omega is zero back emf is zero and the current is maximum when when omega increases the emf increases the back emf increases and finally the current becomes minimum now see this is the equation If E is the applied EMF, external EMF, small E is the back EMF, and R is the resistance of the coil, then the current flowing through the coil will be current flowing through the coil will be E minus E by R. Yes, you can think of it like this. First of all, E minus E. Okay, the net EMF will be external EMF minus the back EMF. Why minus? Because it is opposing the coil. So E minus E net EMF is equal to I into R. So this equation is very easy to understand. Now using this only you will get the value of I as E minus E by R. E is also you can write this as well, right? E is equal to K omega directly proportional to omega. So you can write this expression also. And now you can see that at time is equal to zero, at T is equal to zero, E is equal to zero. Therefore current is equal to E by R which is maximum. So E by R is the maximum current. So what you have to remember in this, I will tell you. Remember first of all this. This is easy to remember. External EMF minus back EMF. This is the net EMF is equal to I into R. Okay. 
using this you can get the value of e you can get the value of i now you can see at time zero e is zero because omega is zero that's why current is maximum which is e by r okay now one thing at time is equal to zero what do you see at time is equal to zero current is maximum so in this case the current will be maximum now when the current is maximum the motor might burn as the armature coil is made from copper wire of low resistance when motor starts running a very heavy current passes through the armature coil because when the motor starts running there is no back emf so heavy current passes through it due to which the motor may get burned for to prevent this in the starting we st use a special variable resistance connected in series with the armature which is called a starter because initially if there is no back emf current is very high so the motor get burned so to make the resistance more or the current less we use a starter in the beginning so in beginning there will be starter and then we will remove that starter some mechanical connections will be there okay so guys again what are the concepts that we have studied okay what are the concepts that we have studied that finally e external emf minus back emf is equal to i into r from that you get some equations right now at time zero omega is zero so that means back emf is zero that means current is maximum so if current is maximum the motor might get burnt therefore we use a starter a heavy resistance to maintain the current i guess it's done now there is a formula of efficiency okay questions might come on this formula so how is efficiency of motor defined efficiency of anything is work done by the motor energy taken from the electric source by the motor so work done by motor by energy taken okay and the formula will be energy of motor is back emf divided by applied emf into 100 percent so remember this formula for the efficiency of the motor okay efficiency of the motor is back emf by applied emf into 100 percent basically you have this e minus e is equal to i into r so basically e is equal to e plus i r multiply with current i so e i is equal to e i plus i square r so this is the power of the source this is the power of the motor this is the power loss in the resistor so efficiency is the power of motor divided by power of source so efficiency is power of motor is ei power of source is ei so this get cancelled and you have small e by capital e back emf by e and obviously you can multiply by 100 percent okay so this is efficiency and if someone asks what is the power of the motor so power of the motor is equal to back emf into i So how to calculate efficiency back emf divided by external emf into 100 percent is the efficiency that's it power of the motor divided by power of the source power of the motor is e into i small e into i power of the source is capital e into i done one more concept i will tell you we have ei minus e i will write from start only we have e minus e is equal to ir so that means e is equal to e minus ir multiply with current ei is equal to ei minus i square r so ei is the power of motor so power of motor is ei minus i square r okay power of motor is ei minus i square r now when will power be maximum when power motor is maximum we know the concept of maxima and minima dp by di should be equal to zero so just differentiate it dp by di will be equal to e minus 2ir which should be equal to zero maxima and minima concept so e minus 2ir is equal to zero or i is equal to e by 2r okay 
Now, so when power of motor is maximum, I is equal to E by 2R. So what is the back EMF at that time? So back EMF will be E minus IR. I is equal to E by 2R into R. So this is equal to E minus E by 2. So back EMF is E by 2. So you can remember this now. That power of the motor will be maximum when back EMF is 50% of the external EMF. We have proved this. What we have proved? We have proved that power of motor will be maximum if back EMF is 50% of external source. external source okay power of motor will be maximum if back emf is 50 percent of the external source and what will be the maximum power put this i as e by 2r and you will get the maximum power also maximum power of motor is equal to e into i is equal to e by 2r minus i square r so i square will be e square by 4 r square into r so maximum power will be e square by 2 r minus e square by 4 r so which will be e square by this is the maximum power okay so finally you have to remember this right power of motor will be maximum if back emf is 50 percent of the external so that's it Hopefully you can remember this. So this is the concept guys. So this one, you have to remember this efficiency formula back EMF by total EMF. You have to remember this equation net EMF is E minus E is equal to IR and rest the theory part we already know. Okay. So let's do some questions for better understanding. Okay. Let's start some questions. If rotational velocity of dynamo armature is doubled the induced EMF will become. So if velocity, if rotational velocity omega is doubled, this was proportional to omega. So if omega is doubled, back EMF or EMF will also double. So answer will be two times. When the speed of DC motor increases, the armature current. So when speed increases, when omega increases, back EMF increases, therefore current decreases. Right? This we have studied. So when the speed of DC motor increases, the back EMF will increase, so it will oppose more, so current will decrease. Armature current in DC motor will be maximum when? So current will be maximum at the start of the time. We have seen at the start, back EMF is 0. At T is equal to 0, back EMF is 0. Therefore, current will be maximum. This we have covered in theory, you can watch it again. So armature current will be maximum when motor has just started moving. Motor has just started moving then current is maximum. That's why we use starter in the beginning. Now let's take a numerical. Armature of DC motor has 20 ohm resistance. Okay, it draws a current of 1.5 ampere when run by 220 volt DC supply. The value of back EMF is. So I just remember this equation. Net potential difference is E minus E is equal to IR. Now just start substituting the values. External is 220. Current is equal to 1.5 and resistance is 20. So back EMF is equal to 220 minus this will be how much? 30. So this 220 minus 30 is 190 volt. As simple as that. Let's continue. Electric motor operating at 60 volt supplies a 60 volt DC supplies current of draws a current of 10 ampere. Efficiency of motor is 50%. The resistance of its winding is now efficiency is 50%. So efficiency is equal to back EMF divided by E. This is equal to 50%. That means 50 by 100. So E is equal to 0.5 E. Okay. Now the resistance of its winding. So we also know E minus e net emf is equal to i into r so e is 60 
it is given 60 volt. See in the question it is E is equal to 60 volt. So 60 minus small e is 0 0.5 e. So 0 0.5 into 60. Current is 10 and R. So 60 minus 30 is equal to 10 R. So R is equal to 30 by 10 which is equal to 3 ohm. As simple. Next. A motor having an armature resistance of 2 ohm is designed to operate at 220 volt. Its full speed at full speed it develops a back EMF of 210 volt. When the motor is running at full speed the current in the armature is. No problem. E minus E is equal to IR 220 minus back EMF is 210 I and resistance is 2. So 200 minus 10 is 10 is equal to I into 2 I is equal to 5 ampere. Again simple. Next, a simple electric motor has an armature resistance of 1 ohm and runs from a DC source of 12 volt. When unloaded, it draws a current of 2 ampere. When certain load is connected, the speed becomes one half of its unloaded value. Now this is important. If the speed becomes one half of the unloaded value, that means back EMF will also become one half. The back EMF will also become one half. Why? Because this was proportional to omega. So simple electric motor has an armature resistance 1 ohm runs from a DC of 12 volt. So first you will write 12 minus E is equal to IR current is 2 and resistance is 1. So E is equal to 10 volt. Right? First equation. E minus E is equal to IR. So 12 minus E current is equal to 2 and R is 1. When certain load is connected, its speed becomes half of its unloaded value. So its speed becomes half, so E will also become half. So in second case, when you do E minus E is equal to IR, <coughs> now external E is same, which is 12 volt. Now the back EMF will become half of the initial. So initial it was 10 volt. Initial it was 10 volt. Now speed is reduced to half, so E will also reduce to half. So this will become half of initial. 10 by 2 is equal to I and resistance is 1. So 12 minus 5 is 7. So therefore I is equal to 7 ampere. Next. At certain loading conditions, back EMF in DC motor was found half of the supply voltage. Then power delivered by DC motor is maximum. We have proven this. Power delivered is maximum when back EMF is half of the applied EMF. Which of the following defines the relation between back EMF and current in DC motor? When back EMF increases, current decreases. When back EMF increases, current increases. Incorrect. When back EMF decreases, current increases, which is correct. Okay. When back EMF increases, the current will decrease. A 10 horsepower. 240 volt DC shunt motor having armature circuit resistance of 0.5 ohm and a full load current of 40 ampere is started by a starter <coughs> such that sections of the required resistance in series with the armature circuit should limit the starting current to 150% of the full load. So in starting current is maximum. So they are using certain resistance which will limit the, resist limit the current to 150% of full load. The steady state EMF developed by the machine at full load when arm of the starter is moved to the next step. That means that starter is now removed. So full load current is 40 ampere and 150% of that. So 40 into 150% is equal to <coughs> 60 ampere. So we need current till 60 ampere maximum. Okay. And this is 2 volt, 240 volt DC shunt motor. So now at t is equal to 0 starting, at t is equal to 0, there is no back EMF, right? So E minus 0 is equal to IR, E is equal to 240 and current is equal to we want 60 and this is the R, net resistance. So net resistance is equal to 240 by 60 is equal to 4 ohm, right? So basically 0.5 ohm of the winding and 3.5 ohm of the starter. This is the starter and this is the winding, something like this.
ओके सो दिस इज फोर ओम नाउ द स्टडी स्टेट ई एम एफ डेवलप्ड इन द मशीन एट फुल लोड नाउ एट फुल लोड अगेन ई माइनस ई इज इक्वल टू आई आर ई इज इक्वल टू टू फोर्टी करेंट इज इक्वल टू द स्टडी स्टेट ई एम एफ डेवलप इन द मशीन एट फुल लोड नाउ वट इज द फुल लोड करेंट इट इज फोर्टी एम पी एर फुल लोड करेंट इज फोर्टी एम पी एर एंड रेसिस्टेंस वी एफ सीन एस फोर सो ई इज इक्वल टू टू फोर्टी माइनस वन सिक्सटी टू फोर्टी माइनस वन सिक्सटी इज इक्वल टू एटी वन सो दिस इज लिटिल डिफिकल्ट बट होपफुल यू विल अंडरस्टैंड लेटर A 230 volt DC motor has an armature circuit resistance of 0.6 ohm. If the full load armature current is 30 ampere and no load current is 4 ampere, the change in back EMF from no load to full load. And it's simple. E minus E is equal to I R. This is our relation. Okay. So first case 230 minus E1 is equal to current is equal to The full load current is for 30 ampere. No load is 4 ampere. Change in back EMF from no load to full load. So for no load current is 4. Resistance is 0.6. So E1 is equal to 230 minus something. 230 minus 2.4. Now for full load again 230 minus E2. Now current is 30. Resistance is 0.6. So E2 is equal to 230 minus. This is 18. So what will be E1 minus E2? E1 minus E2. The change in back EMF from no load to full load is equal to 230 minus 2.4 minus 230 plus 18. So 18 minus 2.4 is 15.6 volt. Okay. So that's it about back EMF and all. It's not a very important topic, but sometimes questions might come. So I will just give a quick revision. First of all, motor. So whenever a coil, whenever there is a current in a coil which is placed in magnetic field, it will experience the torque. Because of that, the motor starts rotating. The function of commutator is to change the direction of current. Carbon brushes maintain the contact. That's it. Next part. Back EMF. Now since this is a coil which is rotating in magnetic field, so the flux changes and EMF will be induced. This EMF will oppose the external EMF, external potential difference, external battery. So this is known as back EMF. and greater the speed greater omega the back emf will be more and more the back emf it will oppose more so current will be less so this is the concept here okay second part is the equation external e minus back emf is ir write this expression in any form you want okay just remember at start omega is zero so back emf is zero current is maximum after some time omega is more back emf is constant then current is minimum so that's why we use starter in the beginning next efficiency formula is power of motor divided by power of source power of motor is back emf into current power of source is external emf into current so that's why efficiency is back emf divided by e remember this formula next part power by motor will be maximum when back emf is 50% of the external emf and the maximum power will be e square by 4r remember this then the questions go through these questions again only difficult question was this one was bit difficult question you can ignore it also no problem otherwise basic problems you should be able to do it okay so that's it guys have fun enjoy take screenshot ask doubt do whatever bye bye